How y'all feeling today? Good. There we go, there we go. I just wanna, um, first of all, let me introduce myself. I know we've been on Zoom all year, right? This is like my first time seeing a lot of you face to face. It feels good to be in person. Uh, but I'm, I'm Mr. Nate. You probably, I probably called your phone a bunch of many times. I've been knowing you throughout the year. Um, I'm the academic advisor for the Upper Bound program here at LNESC. And um, yeah, we're here tonight just to, oh, there we go, there I am. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just here to with you guys for tonight. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves, relax. It's all we're all family here. Um, it's our award ceremony just to recognize our students and, and things we've done this year. So next, I'll be um, calling up Shane. He's going to give us some remarks. Our senator director. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I know that it's uh, it's different coming out right after the pandemic, and I appreciate you coming all the way out to Sooner City um, to come be with us. Um, I am uh, very proud of what our team and our students have accomplished. Um, so right off the bat, I want to give a round of applause to all the students here, right? I also want to uh, acknowledge my my team. Uh, I want to thank, thank you. Dean, uh, his town partners no longer in here. Uh, he's in sunny Florida, but for uh, Franklin, for helping to see us through the pandemic. Um, partners like Rashawn have helped us really work with you students directly um, to make things happen, even during the middle of the crisis, even during the middle of the pandemic. Um, this team did not give up. I want to give a huge shout out to my right hand woman, Michelle Rodriguez, to make sure that every piece of paperwork is taken care of. Doesn't matter if it's a purchase requisition, a timesheet, or a major purchase for $1,000, uh, she's behind it. So I'm very thankful to her and Paola for that. Um, and I would also like to uh, look for our new program manager, Angelica, who's going to be with us. You'll be seeing a lot of her. She's probably called many of them so far. But we have accomplished so much through this pandemic, uh, whether it's taking courses after school, really showing your rigor and your dedication to the program, uh, or running through a work ready program, which many of you all are here from as well, um, and going to your work sites and, and joining me on Fridays to participate in that program. I cannot uh, express enough how proud and thankful I am for each and every one of you. And for now, I just want to enjoy the rest of the evening. Let's go ahead and eat, and uh, be sure to check out the documentary that we have uh, on the screen here just a little bit. So thank you all. I'll get into the resume and bio. We led a financial bio for that we saw. We ran with all of the Even with, even, even with 
features such as CBS, Insider Edition, CNN, NPR, and NPR, Rashawn considers his most significant accomplishment playing an essential role in mentoring the next generation behind him. Please join me in welcoming Rashawn now. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I feel so good to be outside, right? <laughs> um, I know uh, we're still at the height of, I guess, round two of the pandemic, but we're here, right? We're here. Um, so I'm going to read a quote to you guys to get started from, uh, ironically, Sylvester Stallone. It's funny that I decided to start with this quote because as me and my team was driving on our way to the hotel today, uh, we drove past the argument, and we were laughing at the fact that for so many years, Philadelphia sports, the only thing we had to hang our hats on was the fictitious boxer who's really from New York, right? <laughs> but the reality is that movie taught us so much. It taught us so much. And so one of the things that really stuck out to me when Sylvester Stallone spoke about his accomplishments, especially at the beginning of his career, is that he's not the richest, the smartest, or the most talented person in the world, but he succeeds because he keeps going and going and going. See, I, I like to say the definition of success is really consistent. Because it doesn't matter how bad you may be at something at first, if you stay consistent with it, and practice it, and do it over and over and over again, you can and will become good at it. See, I was a kid with a lot of dreams. And uh, for those who know me, would say maybe I was the energizer one. And maybe that quote of going and going and going fit right, just like those old energizer commercials with that rabbit. That's all he did was beat that drum and run, 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 right? You guys remember that commercial? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So some would say that was me as a child. And just as today, I was very ambitious. I had dreams. And I remember a time I was driving with my family and I was about 14. And I was talking about what my first job was going to be. Everybody in my family started at a fast food restaurant. Everybody around me worked at a fast food restaurant. I didn't want to work at a fast food restaurant. My friends, when they were done work, coming to play, they smelled like fried chicken, right? <laughs> <laughs> the one that worked at Wawa, she smelled like the Wawa hoagies. That wasn't for me. So I said, my first job isn't going to be at a fast food restaurant. And my parents, as much as I love them, said to me, Rashawn, that's impossible. Well, guess what? My first job was at a radio show, making $11 an hour plus commission. That's impossible, right? And then I remember I was this nerdy little kid who slew footed. I'm still slew footed, by the way. <laughs> And um, didn't seem to be very athletic. And I had a cousin who's a real close friend of mine. You know, he would flip off the top stairs, and I would just go up the first two and jump down. Right? Or he would jump off the roof, and I'm like, nah, you got that. I'm just going to, you know, catch you when you when you get there. But I wanted to be a successful athlete. I wanted to play high school sports. You know, I wanted to do the things that my cousins and my friends did. And guess what? People told me. It's not for you. Stick to the books. I ain't nobody reading. You mean stick to the books. Guess what? As Nate said, I went to LaSalle University, a Division I track and field program, and I ran Division I track. Impossible. Right? So when we look around, and when people tell you guys that your dreams and your aspirations is impossible, say, yeah, I know. And that's exactly why I'm going to accomplish it. Okay? Because impossible is Barack Obama as president. Impossible is Kenneth Frazier, 
the newly retired CEO of Merck, an African American who was the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Impossible is LeBron James using his athletic talents and gifts to become a billionaire. By the way, one of the fastest billionaires in the history of the world. Impossible is Swag Boy Q and Gabby Morrison from TikTok. Y'all know them? <laughs> yeah, she knows them. <laughs> Impossible is Tyler Perry. Think about what your impossible is. So I'm here today to tell you guys that it's probably been most of your life that you've been told that you can't do something, that it's not for you, that your environment is going to hold you back. Not here, not now, not for you guys, because you've already accomplished the impossible. You're here now. You're learning, you're growing, and you're a part of a program like this, obtaining knowledge and literacy, which in my book is the absolute power of this world. You're being empowered with everything that you do. And you show up and you keep going and going and going. And that's how I know every single one of you are going to succeed in whatever it is you want to accomplish. So I'm here today to tell you guys, be the impossible, do the impossible, achieve the impossible. It's in you. You got this. So a large part of our, uh, you know, being, being in the pandemic, a large part of us being able to get through that was uh, due to Mr. Rashad helping out with a lot of financial literacy classes. And there were a lot of our students who stood out and who participated and went through that course. They had several options to choose from, and that is one thing that they chose. Um, and it was a rigorous course. It wasn't something that was just thrown together. You can see how very well put together uh, Mr. Rashad is in, in his presentation. So I know that our students went through um, some serious work. And you've got to keep in mind that I know it wasn't easy for these students. And you can ask your students, going to school virtually was not easy. And then on top of that, asking them to be a part of a program after school, still virtual, is a huge, huge ask for a teenager to stay sit still on the screen the whole time. Uh, so what we want to do is, what well, Mr. Rashad wanted to make sure that we recognize every single student who participated in that program. Um, so what we're going to be doing now is kind of going through this. So we know that not every single student is here tonight, but we are streaming through Zoom. Mr. Rashad is streaming through uh, social media, and we want to make sure that uh, these particular students are acknowledged and uh, and are recognized for the one hard work that they put through. So I'm going to call names, and if you're here, please do come on up. You know, Risto Gonzalez? I think, I think the left side is there. Imari Vasquez? Maya Crocker? 
I am up for Craig. Lillianette Rodriguez. Jasmine Ware. You got one that's here. Just keep at this height. So be fine. Just aim up. Brianna Thomas. No, I'm just aiming up. Orange. The Getty, the third. Gisela Colon. Diana Foster. Oh, free that means people call me Jay. Gianelli Crystal Gonzalez. <laughs> Jessica Ware. Remind me to ask since that happens to someone's face. Simani Vasquez. Remind me to ask since it happens to someone's face. Cindy Ramos. Okay. Amaya Crawford. said there were a couple of different modules that the students could have participated in. And the first one uh, was our financial literacy module. But the second one, which every student that we named today went through both modules. So you know, over the last year during the pandemic, 12 to 15 weeks with me and our team on Wednesdays, a couple hours, growing and doing personal and professional development. One of my favorite modules that we put together for Sean LLC that we're doing with a multitude of programs like this one is Young Entrepreneurs Grow. And it's just a pleasure to be able to give back something that I had to learn on my own, which is how to grow and build a business. And so the students that you heard today went through a six week course on how to build a business from scratch. They talked about their passions, their purpose, they talked about things that they love to do. And then we took their passion and purpose and we turned that into a business idea. And then we talked about how to take that business idea and make it an actual official business. So when we put Sean LLC together in 2018, one of the things that we said we were going to commit to is ensuring the success of our students and the people that come through our program. And so with this program, we have committed to give out business grants. So the students that we're going to name next are students who, now let me tell you, every single one of the students who are involved was outstanding, participated, had great ideas. These students were just picked from our team uh, because we really had, I wish we could give out all 20. Uh, but we are giving out three business grants, and these students, when they're ready, will be able to start their business officially for free. Sean LLC is going to pay for their registration, we're going to pay for their permits, and we're going to give them marketing dollars to get their business started. So, those two students who are awarded uh, that those business grants is Lawrence, Now, see, I don't want to first name basis with the students, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cheyenne. And Deanna. 
Kate, and to everybody, especially the students, thank you guys for trusting the Shonda LLC to spend that time with all of you uh, during the pandemic. Uh, it's really been fun, and uh, we feel like we got it. We're going to do the uh, Upward Bound and Upper Bound and Science Awards. We have Mr. Nate here. Mr. Nate, do you want to read about yeah, it? Yeah, Upward Bound. Upward Bound. Upward Yeah, Giselle again, Rossini. 
And we have uh, Jessica Ware for UV. Jessica. Yeah.
The other thing I should point out is I would be remiss not to thank my uh, my work ready team, uh, Ms. Michelle Rodriguez, um, Ms. Balala, Alexis, uh, and then we have uh, Jamie Rodriguez who is not here. But seriously, a uh, round of applause to them for. Uh, That is another job that's not easy. They have to be the conduit between the student and the work site. And I don't know if you have, how many times people are saying that we're calling them late or we're going to be out and they have to come in to the work site for them to kind of negotiate that. So very hard work and I just want to thank you. This is Alexis and Michelle. And Paola. All right. And so next up we have Tiffany. We have Ms. Denosha Martinez. Oh, awesome, Paula. 
So next up, I'm going to, uh, well, first of all, we're going to be watching a documentary. Uh, that documentary is really the brainchild of Nate McCoy, um, who said, I asked, I had a whole bunch of money to say how he said he's like, a documentary. <laughs> and so um, with that idea, we ran with it. Uh, and we called uh, one of the best people that I know for video. Uh, she has worked with us uh, for several years, um, Ms. Kenza. Uh, kids has worked with our students. And I think this is probably the biggest project that she's done with us. And so I'm going to let her talk a little bit about the film, and then we will take it to the preview. Ms. Kinza, thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you guys see how I feel like this is a small video? Um, but, um, so I had the opportunity this summer to uh, teach a documentary course um, with LNESC and the UV VMS students. Um, and we also created a documentary film. Um, and this idea was proposed by Nate McCoy, who was the academic advisor at LNESC. And he basically wanted to document and capture the um, the impact that UVM VMS programs have on students um, and how important they are and um, he actually was a part of these, this program when he was younger um, so it was really important to him um, and I'm really honored to be you know, chosen to help create this film with the students and with me um, and basically the past two months um, we met deeply online and in person uh, to shoot this, and I'm super proud of all the students. Um, I'm not going to name them because you can actually see their faces on the screen. Um, and we shot this um, in person. Um, it was, you know, despite being in a pandemic, um, despite the, the, the heat, 90 degree weather, um, and despite all the pushbacks we had, uh, we still made something, we made a project, we made a film, um, and I'm super proud of the students, and not just students, but they're filmmakers now, so you guys have two, two titles now, um, so there's not much to say, there's more to show, so start playing. If it wasn't for um, for Upward Bound, you know, I, I can't say I wouldn't be in school or I wouldn't have went to college, I wouldn't have graduated. But um, I know it would have been a lot tougher. Um, it would have been it would have been very hard. Um, I'm not sure how I would have got through. And I look at some of my peers I went to school with, some family members, um, and yeah, I just think I think honestly I thank God that I would that I had the program and I just wanted to kind of be that same type of blessing to the students to kind of again bridge that gap and staying in between um i know where these kids come from i may not be from philadelphia I may not be from the same exact neighborhood the same exact background but i know what it's like to be low income i know what it's like to not have the full support of the school district or the or the resources in the school all the time or, or have that person in the school that just connects with you so my whole goal and what drives me is, is the kids and really getting them um, to the next level because they're brilliant they deserve it um, they just kind of, they just need to know how they need the people to point them in the right directions and, and connect them with the right groups. All right. Take it Unless did you want to slap me? Yeah, sure. 
today we are at LaSalle <laughs> University, uh, learning a lot about their mission, learning a lot about their undergraduate programs. Um, it is a really great small school to be considered. They have a wonderful Busca program uh, for uh, ELL students. Um, all around, we're just happy to be out and about. Your experience is all going to be made by yourselves in the sense of getting involved, the friends you meet, and what you want to study. If you don't know what you want to study right now, that's okay. That's why we're here and you can figure it out. Because your freshman and sophomore year allows you to kind of test the waters and try a bunch of different classes. Small, medium, large, and extra large. Feel free to grab your shirts. Awesome, thank you. You're very welcome. There's staff there. My drive is that genuine look of excitement that we get from a student when, we're, when, when we do that initial presentation and they're like, okay, I'm gonna take a shot. I'm gonna take a shot and I'm gonna be a part of this program. Um, and we tell them, you know, this is their money and spend it how they want. And they come up with some, oh, I wanna go to Baltimore. All right. And then we end up in Baltimore or we end up in New York City and you see this kid dancing in the streets and it's like, uh, we're actually here. Yeah, I mean, that's, I live, I live, like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I live for that moment. I feel like everybody at least need to make it to graduation. Everybody need to graduate. And if you want to go to college, go to college. I feel like some people feel like because of where they from, they feel like they can't go to college. Like, I don't understand that, but hopefully, hopefully everybody graduate. And Maybe if people start going back to school, um, the gun violence can stop because it's summer and teenagers, you know, they like to act up, they like to do what they want to do. So hopefully school is a distraction. And especially for male, for the males and the boys at our school, um, sports and stuff like that, hopefully that keeps them focused and keeps them off the streets and stuff like that. Cause it's really sad. I mean, even if they're in school, it can't stop them from doing bad stuff. Like, with their parents is like teaching them things they're not supposed to be teaching them while they like not in school. Is that like the biggest thing like for y'all as a generation, especially being youth in Philadelphia? Y'all think about the most? I feel like I feel like the teenagers do. They're they're more so like okay, I see what's going on in my neighborhood. It's either I do that or I get out. And most of them choose the path of I'll follow this, but instead they won't go and try to like do better and go to college. Or most of the times like my mama needs me here, so I'm gonna stay here with her. But sometimes the parents just want you to get out, but they feel as though they have to stay. I, it's just like, do what you think that you actually have to do. Don't try to stay um, where, don't stay where all the violence is happening, try to go out and do better, try to like make new ideas to come back and change what's going on there. What I like about this program is, I like personally like the fact that we actually got to meet in person finally, because it hasn't been a lot of that during the pandemic. And I like how we're able to like get out of Philly sometimes, because most children don't get that. And I'm glad that I get to experience that while at such still a young age. Some things I do like about it is that I get to get out. I can get out more. I can socialize with people. Um, I, I do like the trips because we probably gonna go to places that I've never been. So that's gonna be exciting. Um, I like how the program is like, I'm actually getting something out of it. So yeah. Programs like Upward Bound are relevant and important today for multiple reasons, right? You talk about the wealth gap and people say it's going to take 258 years for us to close that wealth gap. But I actually turn around and say it can take just one person's lifetime. It can take 30 years, 50 years. It can happen in my lifetime. 
And how it can happen is us providing resources and opportunity. You know, the reason why the wealth gap is made, the reason why the wealth gap is the way it is, is because there weren't programs like Upward Bound. There weren't knowledge and resources available in communities like Kensington, a community like North Philly, West Philly. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, the suburban communities and, and Chestnut Hill communities where those things are taught, those resources are provided, and you don't know what you don't know. That's just the simple thing about it. So a program like Upward Bound um, being available to the students, I wish it was available to me when I was in high school, even though I received some of those resources because it gives opportunity to receive even more knowledge. And knowledge is power. Knowledge is the way you grow. Knowledge is the way you build success. Knowledge and understanding is how we get ahead in this world. So a program like Upward Bound allows for opportunity and for a chance of those families and households who would typically be behind that now actually have a chance to get a head start. So it's absolutely important for these programs to be in the areas that they're in, for the students that they're for, and providing the resources that they provide. And I've been with this program for about three years and a half. I was first introduced to it by someone named the CC, that's her nickname. And um, I've been in a lot with the staff. I've been in lots of places. Um, I learned that there's a lot of things that um, I should really try to reach out for. Um, a lot of the things I've uh, experienced, I've experienced before, but they made it greater, like really bigger. The top of the building, that is the largest piece of sculpture on a building in the world. Wow. He stands 37 feet tall. He was brought up there starting around 1894 in about 12 different pieces. He uh, weighs 27 tons. And you could even get close to him. All of the sculpture is absolutely highly detailed. The buttons, everything on every piece of sculpture. There are over 250 sculptures uh, on the outside of the building. And then there's more on the inside. This is the Delaware River. The River. North, south, west, east. This is lined up. Yeah. Philadelphia is almost lined up perfectly on true north. This is one of my fun things. So about, uh, I think it was about four years ago, there was a very short-lived uh, TV series for cable that was set in City Hall. This this is just a prop that when Mayor Nutter saw them moving out of the building, he said, can you can you, can you you leave this here? Because it has a nice picture of City Hall on it. It's made out of wood. Yeah. It's nice. If anybody needs a toner cartridge, these are expensive, so please take one. <laughs> so this is the Mayor's reception room. Mm. So you can tell this is just a really nice looking space. Some people may not believe in God, but praying <laughs> and believing in God is low key help. Like, not even low key, it's high key help. Like, you can pray. You could, um, even though you might not have family members, you could have the right friends that you can go to and talk to. You might have the right friends that you could spend a night with. So, yeah, but if you don't believe in God, I feel like just be positive. Don't think about the bad things. Think about all the good things. Think about your future. So if you think about your future, honestly, and you want your future to be good, you want to go to college, you want to graduate, then that should be your motivation to keep going and just be positive. Yeah. Even if you're not Christian, have something to believe in is important. Because like the three main things that make a person who they are is their history, like their logical thinking, and like what they believe in. If everything yeah. they believe in is bad and they can't think logically, and like they don't have any good history, then you go. Then you lose all foundation. The triangle is mathematically the strongest shape, and the two foundations you need, I think, is like logical thinking and um, good history. Because once those two gone and you don't have nothing to believe in, then basically you don't have the bridge no more. You just fall through. So how do you, how do you see connected to you? how did that happen? Well, my mom wanted me to talk to her about like the colleges I wanted to go in. And Miss Santiago said like there was a 
the, she was like this group uh goes to like different colleges and talk mm -hmm. about random stuff and well at the college they talk about what they do and stuff like that and i'm just like that sounds fun mm -hmm. like to be honest yeah and she was like if you want to like be in it just give me an email i can give it to them and i was like yes please just seeing students like when they first come into the program a lot of them are very shy and they don't really know what they're getting into and they they're not ready to like open up to especially um students their age or like adults which is like understandable but in the ub program um as time goes on after like a few months like everyone in the program is just friends it's great everyone talks openly they feel like it's a safe place to share their how they're feeling and like how they're doing in general in school and at home and it just means a lot to me and i know other staff when students are able to confide in us and just trust us to keep that information for them. Um, I also love seeing their academic progress. Um, when they come in and they need help on homework, I love helping them on homework. If they wanna come in and show me they got a good grade on like a spelling test or a math quiz, I love to see it. I'll put it up on the board as soon as I see it. Um, but yeah, I just, I just love it. I love being their number one supporter. <laughs> I guess I could say every time I get I get a student that is Spanish speaker, I mean I get really excited because Spanish is my first language, and I think um, being in this country where the main language is English and having like it's a struggle having to understand the system, how school works, and then how college work for students that are in our program that are only Spanish speakers, having to deal with all of this in a language that is not theirs, it's hard. So being that person that can help them out, help them out in their own language is, it's good. Having a program that gives you both of, uh, the best of both worlds. Like we offer them services in Spanish, offers, offer them services in English. So that's a plus. So I just kind of went to, to capture the good work that we yes, do yes. Um, here. <laughs> Um, with the program and with the students um, and so people can see it firsthand and they can understand why this work is important and why this needs to be funded and why we can continue, why we should continue to fund these types of programs, how it impacts the students before, during and after, you know, after they, we, we've touched them through these types of programs. And it is important to me that we do it for this program because it is a federally funded program. It's not a privately funded through a corporation or a business or a wealthy individual, but it's a federally funded program that essentially uh, the American people pay for. And so, yeah, I just want to capture why, why it's important that we continue these types of programs in these types of communities.
So thank you all very much for uh, continuing to participate in these programs, uh, whether it's work ready, upward bound, upward bound math and science, or a 21st century program, which we really need to touch on. Um, but thank you very, very much. Uh, and that concludes tonight's program. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.